welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over IBM Watson, a few services it provides, and of course today I'm with my mentor Rob High here at again IBM Interconnect 2017. As you saw in the last video, I was with John Cohn uh, talking about the TJ Bot and IoT uh, with the TJ Bot that actually uh, Rob High here actually gifted to me on stage during our iTalk. Uh, and so uh, we're going to be of course creating many more videos with that, but for now we're talking about Watson and doing a quick Q&A session about some of your frequently asked questions about Watson. But before we begin, Rob, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, I'm Rob High. I'm the CTO for IBM Watson. I've had the privilege for the last several years to be able to guide the technical strategy for IBM's uh, work in cognitive computing. That is great. All right, so let's begin with one of the most asked questions that my subscribers have for you, which is really, what's the difference between AI and cognitive uh, versus cognitive computing, or sorry, traditional computing? Traditional computing. Uh, yes, yeah, so what's, what's really the difference here? What, what makes cognitive computing so special? So one of the key things that cognitive computing does is it really begins to look at the world the same way that we do. You know, if you really kind of look at our world around us, it's full of signals. You know, the light is a set of, of, uh, of, uh, of either particles or waves, depending on how you want to look at them, that have a certain frequency to them, that give them color, give them brightness. Um, um, that's just one thing. You know, our voices are carried as, as audio signals. Um, the things that we feel, the things that we um, are able to touch, the things that we smell, all these things are signals. Mm -hmm. And what's really amazing about human beings is essentially what our brain is capable of doing very, very well is figuring out the patterns of meaning in all those signals. And that's true whether these are physical signals, the signals that we associate with physics and chemistry uh, and biology, or even more softer signals, the signals of emotion, the signals of intent, the signals of imagination, all those are signals as well. And one of the things that we've tried to do in the cognitive computing system is really kind of follow that same approach to understanding the world that we live in by just picking up all these signals and then looking at the patterns of meaning that we can find in the cognitive system similar to the way that humans do as well. And that's just completely different than what we've done in the past where, you know, to build a program you had to write the logic of every mathematical turn that was going to occur within um, that particular algorithm. Yes. Perfect. All right, so now that we've gone over really the difference between cognitive and traditional computing and what makes cognitive so special, uh, would you like to touch upon a little bit about how cognitive is assisting humans? So one of the things that we really focus on is not just simply recreating the human mind, uh, in part because, frankly, the human mind is really amazing. It's, it's you know, mysterious, um, but yet it also is very good at doing certain things. Instead, we look at is how do we augment the human mind? How do we take what human beings are really good at and, and extend it, um, give it more strength, give us more power by being able to take our mental capabilities and using a cognitive system to do things that we could not naturally do on our own. Perfect. Uh, so that's what uh, what uh, is IBM. You know, uh, I mean, we've all heard that IBM is working with cognitive computing, and Watson is a system created by IBM uh, that can understand, it can reason, it can learn, it can make decisions for itself based off of learning from these signals and these inputs that it's being given in order to give output that the user would want. Uh, and so now, though, uh, another question. How can developers around the world actually use Watson's capabilities in their apps? So one of the things that we were able to do over the years of experience with Watson is begin to identify what were sort of the key building blocks that were necessary to construct a really useful cognitive application. So we took each of these building blocks and we put them in the cloud, given them an API, and made those APIs available through the cloud for anybody to use. So really, building an application is as simple as identifying the service that you want to make use of, writing the code, all these code, all these APIs are available as RESTful services, so if you know how to build a JSON structure, as you have done in many of your videos, um, you can make use of these services. There's a wide variety of them available, so all you have to do is go to ibm.com slash bluemix, 
navigate into the Watson zone and you're going to find those services and be able to pick them up and make use of them. Exactly. So Watson has things like speech, vision, natural language processing, and you know general reasoning and logic, right? That's right. And the key ones are things like conversations, right? Exactly. Because that's a very common use case for exactly. people today. Is they want to build what some people refer to as chat chatbots, but yes. I like to think of them as not just a chat, but really a conversation, yes. right? Yes. Trying to build an application that walks people through their problems. Conversational bots. Exactly. Oh, okay, it. yeah. Yes. There we go. So, in fact, if you'd like to find out more about how you can build these conversational bots and use Watson's APIs, there will be a link to the Tan May Teaches Watson playlist down below, <clears throat> and then you can, you know, go ahead and check out how you can use those Watson services in your applications. But now, another question is, well, what's the underlying technology behind Watson? What types of algorithms do you, do you use? Like, what's, what's going on behind it? So we've actually gone through a transition over the years. When we first began, we were heavily focused on using classic machine learning algorithms. Um, you know, things like uh, logistical regression, uh, SBMs, um, even linear regression in Bayesian nets. We've more recently evolved over to making better use of deep learning algorithms, um, convolutional neural nets, uh, recurrent neural nets, or even more exotic variations of, uh, of long short-term uh, memory um, algorithms, um, that we'll call LSTMs. Um, and usually in combination. It's not usually just a single algorithm. It's usually different algorithms that we're leveraging to pick up on different kinds of signals and find those patterns. Exactly. Uh, so that's what goes behind Watson. But now another question is, well, uh, I mean, this will be on my YouTube channel soon, but I've actually sometimes, you know, gone ahead and created, um, I guess you could say, mixes of services to create one extremely powerful service, like conversation enhanced by tone analyzer by, say, for example, uh, actually combining the conversation and tone analyzer by whenever you send a, uh, a uh, message to conversation, yeah, is, yeah. it'll actually put the tone of that message into a context variable so that you can, of course, access uh, access the tone and give personalized responses. Do you think, or do you believe Watson uh, will, I guess you could say, start to support like mixes of these APIs built in soon? Mashing them up together yeah. in, in both uh, structured and unstructured ways? Um, the answer is very likely. You know, there's still choices that we have to make as we move forward, making sure that people can match these things up in the style that you described, yet at the same time keeping each individual service as simple as possible. Yeah. And of course that's a balance. We're always trying to measure how complicated we're making things so that we don't and we can keep things to the point where people can do everything they really want to do without being bogged down. So yeah, you're going to see more and more at least patterns of integration where you can take something like a conversation, integrate it with tone analyzer, integrate it with personality insights, integrate it with other services like the weather to be able to understand you know, what the weather is like outside where you are or where you're going, um, what the environment is like, the place that you're at, you know, if that's in your home or in your car or in your office, what else is happening in that room that would also inform how the conversational system should interpret what you need to be able to anticipate that need and be able to offer you choices in that context that are meaningful to you or relevant to you in that environment. So yes, absolutely, you're going to see lots of combinations of this stuff. That is perfect. I can imagine that being very powerful for a lot of developers' applications. Now, one more thing. How can developers give feedback to the Watson team if they want to, say, incorporate a new feature or give feedback on an existing service? So we have a variety of uh, social channels that we invite people to come and join us. Of course, we have GitHub, Slack, um, Twitter, LinkedIn channels where you can provide us input. We love to hear from you. Um, we want to hear what's working for you, the great cases of, of, of success that you've had, doing fun and interesting things, uh, and where things are not working so well for you. Because obviously we always want to make these, these things better. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. And of course, I'd like to say a big thank you to Rob Hot Eye Mentor here uh, for actually taking out the time from his extremely busy schedule to record this video with me. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Of course, uh, Rob Hi, where can my subscribers contact you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn uh, on, uh, under uh, H-I-G-H-R uh, at USI.IBM.com or on Twitter at, um, at R-H-I-G-H. And, uh, 
I uh, welcome to you to join me on either channel. Perfect. Your link, your contact information will be down in the description below. So if you'd like to contact Rob, please feel free to do so. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. If you'd like to leave any comments, suggestions, questions, or feedback, leave them down in the comment section below, or you can email them to me or Rob High at tajimanny.gmail.com or his contact information, or you can tweet them to me at tajimanny. And of course, if you really like the video, please make sure to leave a like down below. And if you believe it can help anybody else you know develop with Watson and his cognitive abilities, please do share the video as well. That's going to be it for this video, but if you really do like my content though, and you want to be notified whenever I release new content and new videos, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and that's going to be it for this video today. Thank you very much for watching today. Goodbye. Thank you, Tim.